Any questions so far? We're glad you could join us. Is this the second report? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, what did you say? We're, we're, on the right we're under the road, the roadway, um, and then the state said, "This is we're probably dead center in front of the portico steps." And one thing, the general, the joint rules committee, which is basically the, I call the board of directors of the house of the general assembly, seven house members, seven senators. They agreed. To, they adopted a master plan for the landscape, which removed all vehicles from Capitol Square. And it was a good decision because now at lunchtime in the day, people take advantage of walking around the building. It's, it's just a, it's become more friendly to the to the people um, as they visit the Capitol. So it's kind of cool to see that back there. I wanted to pause here so you can just use your imagination. Pretend it's 1900, and you just walked up from Main Street to the Capitol. You would be walking up, and as you walk around, you'll see a doorway in the middle. That was how you would have entered the Capitol before the wings landed. We're now, you see where we are? Can you tell where we are? By the, sh by the shape of the, of the ceiling? On the steps? We're under the steps. Oh, yeah. So you basically got new, meeting old. So what you see up there is how the Capitol looked prior to the wings being landed. I want to have that look the next day. On the west side, you notice, remember I said the building, east side is uh, house. the house, west side is okay. I work for the house. Uh, we're going up the east side. Uh, <laughs> these, this, this hallway and one on the west side were added because we want more flow for traffic going to and from the Capitol. You'll notice as we walk through the barrel vault and ceilings, uh, this area as you walk through was first the, the press room, then uh, house space, and then the old capital snack bar called chickens. And so only people really saw them was you may have walked into those areas, but now you've got a chance to see the barrel vault and ceilings. And we've had the window, we've got office space on, the, on this hall and on the west hall, but we've had uh, glass put in above the works area so natural light can come in from the hallway. So we're going to walk into this capital. So we call this a long time. This desk here we call the concierge desk, the staff office, uh, staff and works offices. We have some guide folks to from the extension, going to the extension, going to the building. This is, this is working capital. Uh, a little bit about the declaration you see here. There was a decision was made, had to be made, what point in history do we return the capital to? It was decided in 1908. Why 1908? The wings ran in 06. When they moved to the capital, the wings ran in 06, the decorative paint that we'll see upstairs is basically called, basically the part of the is very dull. Uh, in 1908, the General Assembly asked Mrs. Swanson, who was the new First Lady, if she would pull in the from the building, primarily the House and Senate Chambers, and the rotunda of the Capitol. She agreed, and they were kind enough and gave her a budget of $8,000. And she hired a rookie sign painter. So keep that in mind, $8,000, a rookie sign painter moving upstairs. Um, we had great photographs of the lighting of the building after 1906. So for those photographs, and the catalog will appear to be recreated the light. This, uh, the light you see in the Capitol hallways was done by Crenshaw Light out of Fort County, Virginia. Now, about 60 artists who got together, live out there, and do nothing but do historic light in the buildings. Um, the state seal, when we first came to the building, used to be right dead center here. This area looks the way it looked pre 1962. In 62, the hyphens, which are Structures that connect the main building with the wings were expanded for the legislature. And when they did that, they they closed all four corners of this room with an electrical telephone elevator. And uh, this space here was a, was a house clerk's office space. So we removed all of that and made it open again. Infrastructure, horizontally, they dug about four feet below where we were standing and ran all the infrastructure there. So in the committee rooms, we have carpet tiles for easy access. The speaker's office was kind of hall. I said, the speaker's not going to have carpet tiles. So what we did is put roll carpet in this office and all the access is in a wall in the Um One of the big things about the project was to do no harm to the building. So the challenge for the protocol runs for the infrastructure of the building was easily accomplished because they unripped about 20 chimney flues. And most of the protocol runs were one of those little chimney flues. So that was that. Elevator, surprisingly, when I ran in 1906, they did not come to the Capitol until 1910. And I want you to walk down and look over to your, to your right here and see, see what was where the first elevator was in the Capitol.
first, the first elevator was a Queens Island elevator, installed around 1910. When we started the demolition of the building, we found the old elevator cage. So we restored the elevator cage the way it looked. And if you go in and look up, when the wings were added in 1906, they put a skylight from the top of the stairwell. What you see now is a photo skylight. But it really does open the capital so you can be on the fourth floor and say, Delicate Bell, wait for me. The building also is more art friendly. And if you put in the capital before the renovation, it was very dark and dreary. Um, but the building is more art friendly. Uh, in other words, the HVAC system went through. We had artwork on the, on the first floor of the building, which was not in the, in the building before. So a lot of these paintings are stored and are now out. Um, the, the portrait painted in the World War II is that of Lady Astor. And we'll see that when we go back in there. She was in the mansion. She just got moved over to the Capitol. Uh, Lady Astor was born in Danville. She was the first American who served as a member of the British House of Commons. She died in 1964. Question. Senate has committee rooms, Jack has Senate's uh, clerk's office space. Uh, we have committee we, uh, Senate leadership room is working on this hallway also. How many how many of y'all are in the count for the first time in your life? I stopped here. I remember I told you the Queen was here last May. Um, the Speaker of the House told me that we're probably the only state capital in the country that has portraits of Her Majesty and the Duke here. During the session this past year, I got back to the office of session and the office staff said that the British Embassy had called and wanted my physical address. A few weeks later, here comes this tube from the British Embassy and then inside were these two pictures and of course Her Majesty and the Duke had both signed the cards and there was a letter there from the from the Queen's private secretary expressing their enjoyment of being here for the visit. So these have only been up in the last several weeks, so it's they're, they're great pictures. Did you get to give her a tour? I didn't get to give her a tour, but um, <laughs> where we are now, every place that we're going to go, Her Majesty was here a year ago. So uh, we're going to work around housekeeping staff. So if I start heading this way and say, oh, they're there, we're going to move. Let's go on the road and stand around the statue of George Washington. Thank you for your show. Who are the three signers? Because the third one will be the, the that would be a tricky one, one. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Who are the choices? Uh, John Blair or Emmett Hanger? 